man there can't stress me, text me, test me Them man don't contest me, even if they're George Them man there can't best me, uh, can't vex me Them man there can't test me, text me, stress me Them man don't contest me, even if they're George Them man there can't best me so we're here today because we're celebrating 10 years of All Star. Celebrating obviously 10 years of, of the shop itself, but we're also celebrating what we've done over the last decade. Didn't see it coming, you know, it's been a long road, it's been a lot of, a lot of, a lot of stuff happened. Good and bad. It's just a celebration of tattooing, basically, you know what I mean? A theory or a concept, this is in me, I know what I'm about. And yeah, I'm the chosen one, I know the one who's making the choice. Call me a diva, a prima, a ballerina, but I'm still on point. Uh. My name is Jordan Moore. From Jacksonville, Florida, I work at Ainsmith and Rogers. Uh, my name is Paul Rourke, I'm from Galway. I live in Malta. My name is Bo Brady, uh, I work at Captured Tattoo in Orange County, California. My name is Matt Beckerich, I'm from Long Island, New York. I am Todd Noble, originally I'm from Maryland. Well, I'm Andrew Clark, I'm from a wee tiny town in Northern Ireland man called Derry. Forrest Cavaco from Plymouth, Massachusetts. My name is Miles Chappers. I work at Frith Street Tattoo in Soho, London, and it's really nice to be here. I invited all these people because they're about what I'm about when it comes to tattooing, you know, and that's what I wanted it to be. Is it's all, again, like-minded people, all here to celebrate tattooing. They don't care whether they're busy or not busy or whatever. They're all here to celebrate this event. and the shop and whatnot, you know? And that's what it boils down to. You know, I invited them because they're just like-minded and, and they believe in tattooing the way it should be done. I used to work at All Star for eight years. I was Ross's first apprentice. To come back here was such a big deal to me. After spending, you know, I spent most of my 20s between these walls and to come back and be part of this and just see the shop turn 10 years old was even better than I thought it was going to be. Whole day has just been magic. Embarrassingly, this is my first time to Ireland. The thing that's completely brought me here is Ross. And I just said, that, you know, I'd love to come over and celebrate your 10 years, which is fantastic, with a shop that really is pretty tucked away. I mean, for people in Limerick and people around this area, of course, you know, this is the focus tattoo wise. But he's become a world player, which to achieve that and get a, as many people as we have here to come over to this shop and come regularly, that's incredible really. And that's a testament to his work and his attitude to tattooing. So, and, and I love that because it proves that you can be anywhere on the fucking planet and be a player. Coming from New York City to a place like this, or coming from Orange County in Los Angeles to a place like this, it's a very small town, you know? Yeah, first time I came to Limerick, it was definitely a culture shock because I hadn't been to Europe that many times at that point. It was the first like small town in Europe I'd ever been to, really. It was cool to kind of come here and then see just how regular people kind of live their life. I feel like there's a an innocence to Ireland still, which is cool. It's not completely ruined by modern culture bullshit. <laughs> My first impression of Ross. <coughs> instantly likeable, instantly part of the group. A very big character, very, very big, but most down the earth, kind hearted person in the whole world, man. Do you know? He'd do anything for anybody. But also at the same time, he won't take no shit, man. Yeah, loud, hilarious, you know, everything you'd expect, but, uh, and, and more. <laughs> Pretty funny, man. He's a funny dude. Uh, Boisterous, like-minded, life of the party. Yeah, he's a good dude, for sure. <laughs> he's a piece of shite most of the time. But um, when I can wrangle him in and control his bad temper, he's an angel. But if his gums keep flapping as much as they always do, I'm gonna have to fucking shut him down and maybe that'll be the end of him. Any other questions? all in he's all in and anything he does he does it big this event today is typical of his the way he is and the way he conducts business and his personality yeah he really makes an impact on people I've seen so many people get tattooed here and have great experiences over the years and 
keep coming back every time. And, uh, a lot of dedicated, loyal customers that were built here in this shop. I think the reason people come here as opposed to going anywhere else in Ireland is because of Ross and because of what he's built at All Star. It's one of my favorite shops of all time and that he's a, a, a extremely fantastic tattooer, solid and, and great tattooer and a, and a great guy. We have, we have a great friendship and brotherhood that um, it, it, it's a real blessing to have. Not a lot of people can, can have that. I, I wouldn't go to another shop in Ireland. There's no way. Like, there's no reason for you to. He, uh, he's built something really special here, and he is legitimately somebody who cares about the tattooing world in his town. You know, like, he wants people to get good tattoos in his city. He wants to be a place that you know when you walk in the door, you're getting a good tattoo, and you're walking out of there happy. It's becoming a rare thing, which is unfortunate, but this is like a place that you can guarantee you're always gonna get a good tattoo. It seems like Ross really put like his stamp on this town in a good way, you know, and created something here, and you can feel it when you come in the door. His versatility, his ability to put on anything and make it look good, not fucking easy. It's too many people cow down to other people's styles when they work. I feel whenever I look at Ross's stuff, whether it's Japanese, whether it's traditional, whatever it is he does, he does it his way. And it's really recognizable. And so I'm attracted to that. It got me to fucking Ireland. You know, no, no disrespect to anyone in this country. I always felt every, you know, shop I worked at, there was something just not right. And I came at a point, I thought about jacking in tattoo, and I was just done. I just wasn't doing it for me anymore, you know? But I was also obsessed with, you know, the American culture of tattooing, and, but I was never exposed to any of it. So it was just what I saw in the magazines. You know, something sparked one day, and I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna quit. I, I, I'm gonna keep on pushing, I'm gonna try and do it the way I think is right. Opened the shop with a vision of almost approach like the Americans did. They obviously have a lot more history in tattooing than we do. So I was just so obsessed with all that, that culture. I wanted to bring it to Limerick and see how it went down. We opened it up, had this vision, kept on just pushing and pushing and pushing. We were only open a couple of years. So we started getting a bit of notice. People started doing like big articles on us in, in huge magazines. And it, that alone to me was mind blowing. That happened and as a result of that, it, a lot of doors opened up for me. I got started getting invited to conventions all over the world. When I started going to conventions, I started meeting a lot of people, making a lot of friends. I just started traveling like a crazed lunatic. I was learning so much on the road, I was like a sponge. I brought everything I learned on the road, I'd bring it back here. Two months later, I'd be gone again. I'd work for two weeks in the States, California, New York, come back with whatever knowledge I got, apply it to the shop. And as time went on, the shop just morphed into something completely different than I'd ever visioned. People come from the States all the time now and they say this is literally the best shop they've ever walked into. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy to hear that when at the beginning really you didn't know what the fuck you were doing. And all of a sudden you find yourself in this position where people are like, they're messaging me even today about, you know, congrats on the 10 years, what you've done is legendary, you know. To me that is just fucking mind blowing. For me to receive those messages about this shop is fucking, it's, you know, you almost get emotional about it, you know. Let it run. This is not just your average tattoo shop. This is the real deal. This is the real shit. That feeling you get when you walk into a church, you respect it. I always tried to do that through my actions when I was working here. For me, that's what All Star is about. You're coming into something special. Ross always says, like, if I'm gonna be the best of Ireland, I have to have the best people in Ireland. It's a real tattoo shop. It's no bullshit. If you know Ross, you know that it's, it's gonna be top notch. And he puts 100% into everything he does. I've always worked in other people's shops, but when you travel a lot, and out of, out of the last 28 years, I've spent 14 years overseas, well, in San Francisco, in New York, working in Australia. I don't get to accumulate the stuff that he's got. I don't know, maybe a, a quarter of what he's got on the walls, I've got copies of, or stuff that's similar. To see it all under one roof, displayed the way he has, it's like a, it's like a kid going into a toy shop. It's how a shop should be. Just packed with like a person's collection from over the years. So my shop at home is like that, looks good.
I started tattooing in Derry when I was 15 years old. At that time, I didn't really know a lot about tattooing. And I thought, if you wanted a traditional tattoo, you came to Ross Nago, in Ireland anyway. So for me, I was this big. I wanted to work at All Star. I tried and tried and tried, man, and never heard anything back. And then, like, last year, Ross just messaged me out of the blue. And for me, as soon as I stepped through the door here, man, I was like, I fucking made it. Go, oh, Ross, they come and go. The future of tattooing, I don't know. I think in one way the future doesn't really matter that much to people that have a certain way of carrying on tradition, but in in a more maybe like kind of modernized approach or something like that, you know. They do it with respect to how it came before, but then they take it and bring it in their own direction as well. So there's always that throwback to the lineage of, you know, if we're talking about traditional tattooing. Um, that is brought into the tattoo nowadays consciously, you know, so I think that's the history of tattoo and progression. Progression but based on the past, not just going off on a tangent and doing something that's a little too off the wall. I think it's done with respect to the past. If in my perception of tattoo, and that's hopefully the way the future will be for some guys, yeah. Tattooing has changed a lot, not just not just in uh in Limerick, but all over the world, and you know, you've a lot of, not that tattooing belongs to certain people, but uh, a lot of people are coming into tattooing now that don't belong in tattooing. You know, that's just my opinion. Um, so as a result, you're getting shops that open up all over the place. You got, you know, there's a bunch of shops in the city alone. There's people working there that literally have no experience uh, in both tattooing, uh, how to do it and how not to do it, you know, what the, the right ways, the wrong ways, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I, I can see that getting worse. And that's not me talking shit, that's, uh, you know, they do what they do. I'm not going to ever fuck with someone's livelihood or nothing. Or, I personally think a lot, a, lot of the, a lot of the businesses, I'm just talking about my city alone, they have no, no clue what they're doing. It's a shot in the dark. Uh, the general public usually don't know what's right or what's wrong. So all I can do as a business and as a shop owner and as a tattooer, is keep doing it the way I know how to do it. Uh, keep my mouth shut, my head down, and you know, the right people, the right people come our way. It's 100% the busiest shop I've ever worked in, and the way things run in here is a lot more efficient than what I'm used to in other shops. Like, Ross is really, like, almost meticulous about, like, you have to, like, be prepared have everything ready to go. And when the tattoo comes in, you tattoo it as efficiently as you possibly can. And like I learned a lot from Ross about that when I first got here, because up until that point, I've been given leeway with me tattooing and stuff, and I've never been pushed. Today was awesome, I had a blast. I'm whooped. The reception from everybody was, was amazing. The, the day blew my mind. Just this morning, me and Forrest went for breakfast, and he was like, what's up, buddy? You know, he's a very serious guy when he wants to be. He's like, what's up, buddy? You look very nervous. And I'm like, I'm not fucking nervous. I'm just probably anxious, you know? Uh, you know, it started raining. Uh, it's a fucking Tuesday. Uh, I thought that, you know, there was a possibility it was going to be a fucking a washout, a disaster of a day. But I was confident. And the line went around the block. It, and you know the line's going up or up the street and around the block, and I'm like, what the fuck? So at that point, we already had enough. This was at, at 12 midday. Uh, we already had enough tattoos to keep us going till fucking six or seven o'clock, you know, which is to keep nine efficient tattooers busy for that long. is a, It's it's a it's a tall order. Uh, I think everyone fed off the, the energy that was that was here today, like you know. I love watching what everyone's doing and being able to be like, fucking, that's cool, and that's fucking cool, and that's cool, and you know. Like it makes me like almost pumped then because I'm like sitting in a corner being like fucking right after the best tattoo that I can do because these bastards are all fucking tattooing me out of the water, you know? Like today for me was fucking, it's all my childhood shit coming in the reality, man. You know, it was fucking, it was a big day for me. Oh, 
Oh man, who knows what the future is, you know. Uh, I'm just going to keep on doing it the way, the way I know best. I'm going to always keep it exciting. I'm going to always kind of bring a lot of the greats from all over the world. I'm going to keep on bringing them and, uh, and, and share this experience with them. Ireland's finest, 100 fucking percent.